Hello everybody, Mr. Zach here from the Upper Arlington Public Library. Every summer we partner with the Ohio State University Department of Astronomy for the Summer Astronomy Series, where faculty and staff from the university come to the Lane Road Library to give incredible presentations on eclipses to our galaxy, to black holes, to lots of other astronomy related topics. And they bring telescopes and if it's nice outside, we get to do some stargazing. Unfortunately, we can't get together for the series this summer but we thought it would be fun to give you guys some activities that you can do at home. So here are some astronomy related crafts and activities. We hope you have fun with them and learn something along the way. Take care. In this activity, we are going to create map constellations using our black piece of paper for space, some star stickers, you can use some constellation maps, and lastly, you'll need some chalk. So first, we're going to make a constellation with our star stickers. You can make a real constellation, like the Big Dipper, or you can make whatever kind of constellation you want. And once you have all of your stars laid out on your piece of paper, we can get our piece of chalk and trace the stars to make a constellation. We made the constellation the Big Dipper. This is a great way for kids to learn different shapes and the different constellations, and you can even practice spelling your name out. So use the stickers to plot the star points in your name, and then trace your name using a piece of chalk. In this activity, we will be learning about the different phases of the moon using a black piece of paper, some chalk, a paper plate, and Oreos. First, we're going to draw all of the phases of the moon using chalk on our black paper. Of course, we have our full moon when we can see the full face of the moon. Then we have our waning gibbous, the first quarter moon, a waxen crescent, a new moon when the moon is not visible at all, a waning crescent, the third quarter moon, and waxen gibbous before we get back to our full moon. And once we have all of the phases of the moon drawn out on our paper, we're going to take our paper plate, open up our bag of Oreos, and we're going to see if we can create the different phases of the moon using our icing. So twist them apart, and look, we've got our new moon and our full moon already set. So for the rest of it, keep on opening up different Oreos, and using a spoon or a knife, see if you can carve some of the icing away to make the different shapes. So I'll make our first four. We've got the first quarter and the third quarter and see if you can make all of the different phases of the moon using Oreos. In this activity, we are going to take a look at why the moon has all those craters on its surface. Now, we're going to create the moon's surface using flour and baby oil, and we need some rocks or pebbles to use for our meteorites. So first thing, we need about four cups of flour, and then we're going to add a half a cup of baby oil. And once we've added the baby oil to the flour, we're just going to mix it up a little bit. All right, and now that we have our moon surface, it's a little bit thicker than flour, 
and it gets a little bit crumbly, we're going to try to flatten it out. And then we're going to take our meteorites. I've got some rocks handy, and we're just going to drop them like they're coming from outer space and landing on the moon's surface. And you can see that as they fall, they create all of these craters on the moon. And that is how the moon gets all of these different craters. So you can keep on dropping them until you have a bunch of craters on the moon. And the baby oil makes them stick so you can see where all of the meteorites hit. So you can try dropping them from different heights and see if you can create some bigger craters or some smaller ones from dropping them from a shallow height. And this is a great activity afterwards, once you're done making the surface of the moon and you have all of these craters, it's a great sensory activity for the little ones. So you can bust out the Lego toys or some space aliens, and you can go for a space adventure on the surface of another moon. So that's a fun activity that you can do at home to see why the moon has all of those craters. In this activity, we will be exploring how rockets work using propulsion. And for this one, we need straws, string, and some balloons. Let's see what we can do. We are going to make rockets using our string, our straw, of course, our balloon, and we will also need some tape and scissors. So first, what you want to do is find two objects that are about the same height. At the library, I have our book carts, but at home, you can find a couple of chairs or just find something that is about the same height to be able to tie a string to. So I've got one end tied pretty tightly, and I'm going to measure to make sure we have enough string to tie it to the second object. So now I have enough string to make our rocket cap on. Now we don't want to tie it off just yet because we need to take our straw and thread our string through the hole of the straw. Now this can be a little bit tricky, so sometimes you have to give the end a twist and we're gonna try to feed it through the straw. All right, we've got it coming out the other end and now we have our straw on the string. So now we can go ahead and tie the second end and we wanna try to make it as tight as possible. All right, and now we have our tight line with the straw on the string. I'm gonna pull this back just a little bit. And now for the fun part, we take our balloon and we blow it up as much as we want. And once you have it full, don't let it go. You wanna pinch the end. Sometimes this is tricky. You might need a second set of hands. And we are going to take a piece of tape to tape our balloon to our straw. And we wanna make sure we have it going the right way because the air that we put into our balloon is going to act like rocket fuel for a rocket. So if I put it over here and if I let it go and the end is going this way, do you think our rocket will travel in the right direction? I don't think so. So we wanna make sure that we have our air going backwards so our rocket will shoot forwards. So I'm gonna spin my balloon around and I'm gonna to try to keep it pinched as much as possible. And then I'm going to take my piece of tape and tape the rocket to the straw. So now I've got, I've got my balloon taped to the straw on our line. And let's see what happens when we let go of our balloon. Can we count down from five? Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! And that is how we can make a balloon rocket using string, a balloon, some tape, 
and a straw. Thank you for joining me and we will see you again soon. Take care.